welcome. Uh, I'm the Code Pilot. In this episode, we're going to be looking at multiple platforms using the player class that we created in the previous video. If you haven't got that, you can download it from my Google Drive. The link will be in the description. And here we go. Let's get on with it. Actually, before we do get going, let's just have a quick look at what we're hoping to create in this video. Here you can see multiple platforms that we can jump around on using the player class. So let's have a look at the code. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to create a platform class and we're going to pop that just above here where the player class is. There we go. And now we're going to create our initialization function and we're going to pass three parameters to it, X, Y, and width. And then we're going to copy them into the, the platform instance. Now, we're not going to use width. What we're going to do is we're going to create two variables, x1 and x2. x2 is going to be x plus width. It just helps us when we go to test whether the player is within the confines of x1 and x2. And here we are, x2 equals x plus width. And the second function in this class is test. And what that does is it looks for two conditions. One, whether the player's x coordinate is within the confines of the platform x1 and x2 values. And the second one is whether the y player's y coordinate is less than the platform y coordinate. And the player's y coordinate plus the player's velocity is greater than the platform y coordinate. If you don't understand, then I'm going to show you a couple of diagrams that will help. Now, as you can see, there are multiple platforms on this diagram represented by the horizontal lines. Let's focus primarily on the one between the two green lines, x1 coordinate there and x2 coordinate. Now, you see the player, that's represented by the circle. The green dot is the player's x position. Now, if that x position is greater than x1 and less than x2, then that condition is true. And then we go on to the next condition, which is testing to see whether the player Y is less than the platform Y, and also whether the player Y plus the player's falling velocity is greater than platform Y. And if those are true, then this condition is also met. And then we know that the player has hit that platform. So let's go back to the code and see what it looks like. So in the diagram, we were looking to see if the player's x coordinate was greater than x1 and less than x2. But in this line of code, what we're looking at is whether the x coordinate is less than x1 and greater than x2. Because if it is, we don't need to go on to the next condition. We can just return nothing. So in this next line of code, we're checking to see whether the player's Y coordinate is less than the platform's Y and whether the player's Y position plus the player's velocity is greater than the platform Y. If it is, then the player has hit this particular platform. Now, you may be wondering why we return the self if the player has hit the platform. It's because the player class needs that platform in order to be able to test to see whether it's still on the platform when he moves left or right. And you may have also noticed that I've made a typo on the first player in this line. I've missed the Y off. It should say player dot Y, but I go back and correct that later on in the episode. So the last line then, if none of the conditions are met, then we don't need to return anything. Return none. And that's the end of the platform class. So what we want to do now is we want to create a container for our platforms. And what we'll do is we'll call that platforms, just like that. And the initialization is basically to create a list or a container list where we can bung all our platforms when we define them. Creating a container class like this it enables us to iterate through the platforms and do everything we need to do, like testing and drawing and everything like that, all in one go. So in this one, in this function, we're going to be looking at adding a platform to our container. So P is um, the platform class. So 
Here, all we're doing is we're appending the platform, the, an instance of the platform class to our container. The next function in our platform class looks to see if the player has collided with a platform. The parameter that we pass to this function is an instance of the player class. The first thing we need to do is to test whether the player is falling, because if the player is not falling, then there's absolutely no point in testing for collisions. So what we need to do if the player is falling is iterate through all the platforms in our container and find out if the player is interacting with it. So when we go through the loop, P then becomes the next platform in the container. And then we can pass the instance of the player to the platform's test function and get the result from that. If we go back and look into the test function, you can see that if none of the conditions are met, then it returns nothing. But if the player is interacting with the platform, then it returns itself. And then here we're testing to see if the result is a platform or not. And if it is, then we assign current platform within the player class that particular platform. Now you may be wondering at this stage, what is current platform? My player class doesn't have it. And you're absolutely right. So we're going to be making some changes to the player class later on so we can incorporate this new platform class. Right, so if the test function returns a platform held in the results variable, then we can assign that result to the current platform. We can assign the player's Y coordinate to the platform's Y coordinate. And also we can say that the player is no longer falling. Now I return true here because we just want to get out of the test collision function. And I'm returning false here just to balance off the return true. So there are two more functions to do in this class. The next one is draw. And what this function does is it draws a horizontal line on the display surface representing the platform that we're going to interact with. The function itself doesn't have any parameters. That's because we're going to be writing to the primary display surface. Now you could add a parameter that defines the display surface that you want to draw the lines to. So the display variable now contains the primary display surface. Next, we need to go through each of the platforms within the container and assign that platform to P each time and then simply draw a line representing that platform. The platforms are going to be white and we're going to use the white variable for the color data but it was defined outside of the platforms class. So we have to define it as a global. Well, I'll say have to, you don't have to, because it was defined before we defined the platforms class. But in my opinion, it's best to define it as a global. Now here we're passing the coordinates of the platform and you'll notice that I'm using self x1 and self y. This is a mistake. I'm going to be correcting that in just a second. What it should say is PX1, PY, PX2, PY. I realise that in a second and go back and change it. Ah, there we are. And the last thing we need to do now is to set the line thickness. We'll just set it at one pixel. And that's the draw function over. The last one in the platform class is do and that allows us to execute test collisions and draw in one go. Now we pass the player parameter to the do function because test collisions requires a instance of the player class. So that's the reason why we do that. And that's the end of the platforms class. Now let's make a few changes to the player class. Just bear with me a second while I find the line I need to be at. So if you remember from before, current platform contains the platform that was returned after a successful collision between the platform and the player. And now you'll see why we keep a current platform instance in the player class. So we just want to check if the player moves left or right, whether they actually fall off the current platform. We don't need to test all of the platforms, just the one that the player is currently on. So to do this, all we need to do is to find out if the current platform is true or false. If it's true, then it equals a platform. If it's false, then it equals none. 
So in this line, we're going to use the current platform to do a simple test with ourself. So we're passing the player instance to the platform to do a quick test. If it's false, then we know that the player has fallen off the platform. And then we can set the falling to true and the current platform to none. So just a couple more changes we need to make. We need to get rid of this block here. Don't need that anymore. And add a condition that we don't actually need. Yeah, I've just gone back and tested the program and you don't actually need to add this condition at all. So, yep, yeah, ignore that. You can just have L if self falling and then end that condition there. It works perfectly fine without this and not self current platform. I don't know why I did that, but there we go. Such is life. Now then, we just need to add a few more things. Just uh, make a few changes to these variables here because P could mean platform or player. So we'll define player as player and platform as platform. So now that we've created our platform instance, what we'll do is we'll add a floor at the bottom of the display surface. That way, if we do fall off, we don't disappear out of the bottom of the screen. The floor will start at zero in the X position and go to the width of the display surface. If you remember, the add function on the platforms class requires you to pass an instance of a platform. So that's what we'll do here. We'll have it at the height of the display surface minus 10 so you can see it and create a for loop that will generate 50 random platforms across the display surface. There we go, I'll just speed that up because it's a bit of a long-winded process. The platforms are going to be 50 pixels wide, by the way. And the next thing to do is just update the main loop so it includes the new player class and the platforms class. The platforms class, if you remember, accepts an instance of the player class because it needs to find out where the player is. And the player do function doesn't require any parameters at all. So there we are. That's the end. But now we need to test it, don't we? So let's do that. Over to the command prompt, player.py. Oh dear, there's a, the error that I mentioned before. Yep, there was the player dot, wasn't there? It should have been player dot y. Let's quickly go back and fix that and then try it again. Hey, it works absolutely fantastic, brilliant. Well, these scripts are available in my Google Drive. Just go over, download as much as you want. And, oh look, you notice the floor that we added before. There it is at the bottom. It goes from the edge, the far left to the far right. <laughs> brilliant, anyway, so. Thanks for watching. Uh, I'll see you for the next one. Please leave a comment. You know I'm not bothered about the thumbs up and thumbs down. Don't mean anything to me. Always like a good comment. Thank you very much for watching and I'll see you for the next one.